and what was launched under the name of the Arab Spring uh, three years ago in Tunisia, in Egypt, in Yemen, in Libya, and other countries in the Islamic world is part of an initiative according to James Baker who made a slip of the tongue on a television interview to do in the Islamic world from Afghanistan, Pakistan down through uh, the entire Middle East, Syria, Egypt across all the way to Morocco to do to those Islamic countries what was done by the IMF to the former communist countries of Eastern Europe and Russia namely pressure them to enter the game of the free market, the so-called neoliberal, there's nothing liberal about it except for the banks who liberally take the, uh, the profits, but to open these economies, these dictatorships, these monarchies, these uh, shakedoms uh, of the oil-rich Islamic world with trillions and trillions of dollars of resources and treasures to open them to further looting, but there's another element of this. The sovereign wealth funds were one of the targets, uh, the huge resources that were invested from the oil revenues of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and other countries. The state-owned companies in these countries, in Libya, the oil, uh, in Egypt, and elsewhere, but the Arab Spring had a deeper agenda and that's now beginning to emerge. U.S. intelligence services and the U.S. State Department secretly began backing a much more ambitious project using a secret Masonic-like organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood originated in the 1920s, as some of you may know, in Egypt under a fanatical jihadist named Bana, they built a secret underground organization in Egypt to fight against the British and during the Second World War the Nazis came into Egypt and recruited the Brotherhood and supported them in the fight against the British and they found the Nazi ideology quite amenable to their own apparently. After the war the Muslim Brotherhood was taken over as a franchise by British intelligence until the British financially were unable to uh, sustain their presence in the Middle East and turned the franchise over to the CIA, the Americans. Well, when the Brotherhood tried to assassinate a former member who had become the president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, a proponent of Arab, uh, pan-Arab socialism, they had to go underground and the CIA decided to get them out of Egypt and bring them to Saudi Arabia where they fused with a feudalistic trend of Sunni Islam called Wahhabism to create a new hybrid political Islam with a fundamentalist Sharia ideology, a jihadist ideology uh, much like the evangelical Christians in America where I grew up where Either you join us or you're the enemy, as George W. Bush himself, a professed evangelical Christian, said about the uh, war on terror. Either you join us or you're against us. So Washington started playing with a very, very dangerous cocktail of religious fanaticism and prepared over a period of years before the events in Tunisia and before the events in Tahrir Square in Cairo, they began training cadre in Washington. They brought organizers from Canvas in Belgrade, the ones who organized the color revolution against Milosevic in 2000. And they began training cadre to create what was the superficial part of the regime change, Washington regime change, namely the youth Twitter revolution or Facebook revolution, the protests in Tahrir Square. Now, 
These are not purely spontaneous events. They are orchestrated by trained cadre. Canvas, Canvas is financed by the U.S. government through various NGOs and other things. But they, the RAND Corporation, which is a Pentagon think tank, R-A-N-D, Research and Development in Washington, developed a strategy they call swarming, like a swarm of bees or insects. And they applied this using the electronics of, of mobile telephones in Georgia, in 2003-2004, they applied it in Ukraine, the Orange Revolution, and they tried it in several other places unsuccessfully. They tried it in Russia, they tried it in uh, Belarus, but they developed it successfully in Egypt as the foot soldiers, the youth demonstrations for democracy, uh, that then soon were joined by elements of Mubarak's army that had been convinced by the Pentagon that Mubarak had lost his grip and had to go. So some ambitious generals in Mubarak's army uh, turned coat, went to Washington during the outbreak of the protests, and let the thing unravel to the critical point where they intervened. Now Washington dictated to the military that they should allow elections as early as possible, really early, knowing full well the only organized political force in the country after so many years of Mubarak dictatorship was the Muslim Brotherhood. Well, that was Washington's design from the beginning. Most of the advisors in and around the Obama White House, uh, the key personnel in the State Department, are either directly members of the Muslim Brotherhood or are sympathetic to the Muslim Brotherhood and in lia liaison with them. So they forced early elections in Egypt knowing that the democratic opposition would be in disarray, which they were. They had no time to organize structure, precinct organizations and, and campaigns. So not surprisingly, the Muslim Brotherhood won the election and dominated the new parliament together with some radical Islam uh, parties. But the military thought that they had uh, organized it in a way that they would control Morsi and uh, make sure that they had the veto power on anything the Brotherhood would try. Well, that lasted a few short weeks before Washington again intervened and said, uh, Morsi, we will back you if you repeal all of these military controls. So for more than one year now, um, Egypt has suffered under the, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood rule of, of uh, Mohammed Morsi and friends. Uh, 